all able to see me? Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, I just heard you talking about uh, Perry Middle School. I did, I did actually visit when I was in Indianapolis a couple of months ago. Let's see. Yeah, that was a couple of months ago, now that I think of it. Um, yeah, that was really fun. So you guys are in India Indianapolis, right? Yeah. Great. Now, um, I have to say, you guys... I'm sorry? Just to let you know, Abraham Lincoln is one of the Upmark Elementary Schools that feeds into Perry Middle. Oh, so these guys will be there eventually. Great. Yeah, so who knows? Maybe you can, some people there will uh, remember. Or, um, yeah, so definitely, uh, if you run into something, great. Well, thank you very much for letting me know. Yeah, so I was in Indianapolis recently, and you guys have a great city and also a name which is impossible for anyone outside of the city to pronounce. So, <laughs> you guys are very lucky in that aspect. Or not. Okay, so today we're going to be learning about poetry made easy. And poetry is one of those things that is filled with lots of words that um, people have a fun time pronouncing, I would say. Just along that line. Now, you might be wondering why a 12 year old is talking. Um, did you have someone send down your attendance? I'm sorry, no I didn't. I've been, you know, I just got here. Okay, thank you. You might be wondering sorry. why, oh no, that's no problem. <laughs> um, you might be wondering why a 12 year old is talking about poetry. Well, my name is Adora Speetalk, and when I was seven, I published my first book called Blind Fingers, Mastering the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And more recently, I published a second book called Dancing Fingers, which is a book of poetry that I co-authored with my older sister. So today we are going to be learning about poetry made easy, unless you'd rather it be made hard. And I want to start with a definition of poetry. So poetry is literature in verse, literary works written in verse, in particular verse writing of high quality, great beauty, emotional sincerity or intensity, or profound insight. Does anyone want to kind of clarify a little bit more? What do you think that means, this definition right here? Slow down a little bit. I know that I have. If you've ever written a story, 
especially one that's really long. You might have slowed down, you might have lost some ideas along the way. So stories are an excellent way of sharing your opinions, and they're really fun to read. But sometimes poems are easier to write. And um, so, for instance, maybe you're on a road trip, and you see something kind of interesting, and you feel like writing about it, but you don't want to write like a big novel, so maybe you write a poem instead. Poetry uh, is a great way of expressing yourself, especially when you want to do it quickly. So that's one reason I really like to write poetry. So do you guys like to write poetry? Anyone here like to write poetry? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I see yeah. some nice hands. Who would like to tell me why you like to write poetry? Could the teacher please call the students? Oh, sorry. Cameron. Uh, it's fun. It's fun. Okay, so why is it fun? Oh. Because you can use your imagination. You can use your imagination, exactly. Uh, you can use your imagination to create uh, really interesting things and really interesting ways of saying those things that maybe no one else would think about. Another thing that makes uh, poetry writing fun for me sometimes is rhyming. So if you're writing rhyming poetry, try to think of something that rhymes with certain words. That can be really hard, but also really fun. What's another reason you like to write poetry, anyone? Bishop. Um, because it's, um, it's just a cool thing to do when you don't have a lot of time to write. Okay, so it's convenient. Yeah, that's very true. So a lot of times, actually, uh, I love writing stories. Stories are one of my favorite things to write, but sometimes, you know, you're sitting down, you only have a couple of minutes, you don't really have time to tap down a novel, so you can write poems that a lot of times when my mom and I are traveling, I'll just write a poem kind of on the fly. And, and it's a fun thing to do. So convenient, it's fun, you get to use your imagination, and sometimes you can think of some cool rhymes. So yeah, poetry is really a win for everyone because then whoever reads your poetry will get something out of it. By the way, uh, Mother's Day is coming up, so if any of you want to write something kind of nice on a card, uh, poetry is a great way of doing that. Getting our ideas. Raise your hand if you've ever been stuck trying to think of ideas. I see a lot of raised hands. It's practically impossible to live on the planet and not have been stuck trying to think of ideas because there's always something here, something there that you're just like, huh. So to help us think about topics for poetry, we're going to take a look at some possible inspirations. So what are inspirations? for 
sign the red home without me and tell me about it. on 
on the ground whenever he's running. So maybe he's a little, that sounds a bit like me. I kind of just flop on the ground whenever my parents are like, run, run. Yeah. Okay, so he flops on the ground whenever he's running. Okay, maybe a little bit lazy like me. Okay, uh, German Shepherd, he flops on the ground whenever he's running. Who else would like to tell me about a pet and the most interesting thing about that? Uh, tell me about your pet and the most interesting thing about your pet. Um, my hamster. Your hamster? Okay, so what is, is there something interesting that your hamster does? There's a slide in a cage and he jumps off of it and keeps on doing it over. He jumps around in his cage? Is that what you said? Yeah, he jumps off the slide. Oh, he jumps off the side of his cage. Interesting off the side of this cage. I actually have a guinea pig, Minnie, and um, one funny thing that Minnie does is whenever she hears us coming downstairs, she'll immediately start kind of yipping food because she knows that if we're coming downstairs, that probably means she's going to get food. So whenever she hears footsteps on the stairs, she immediately starts yipping for food. Okay, let's get one more pet and an interesting thing to do. experiences 
even going your first day of school, it'll be personal experience. So personal experiences are basically what happens to us. Um, and you can use those as sources of inspiration to poetry. So who would like to tell me what you've been up to this week so far? We've been typing our um, poem book with um, a whole bunch of different uh, kind of poems. So you, kind of you've been working on your poetry book? Or on your class's poetry book? Yes. That sounds really fun. So what kinds of poems have you been writing in the poetry book? Oh. Haiku poems. Haikus? Great. So um, writing haikus for the poetry book, that would be a personal experience. Who else would like to tell me personal experience of theirs this week? Five senses. Five senses poems. Five senses poems? Okay, so writing haikus and five senses poems. Very nice. Tell us something else you've done besides work on the poem book. It could be at home, too. You don't have to stay here at school. Yeah, I think you send it at home. You have to yell at those. She can't hear you. She needs to be about the phone right? Well, let's go on beyond the phone practice. What else have you done this week? On the kite? Season and 
so you guys seem to be uh, writing on that kind of topic. This is a haiku of my own. It's kind of, I just wrote it quickly. A lone chirp, the bird, left behind in its own nest, welcoming the dawn. So that was my poem about a bird, and, or my haiku. And then here's a uh, sonnet. Does anyone know what a sonnet is? Raise your hand. exactly what the good way is to, what the um, way is to write them. So there's a really formal structure. So William Shakespeare, has anyone heard of William Shakespeare before? I see some raised hands. Well, he wrote a lot of sonnets. A free verse poem does not have a fixed poetic meter and is usually unrhymed with lines of different lengths. So the American poet Walt Whitman wrote free verse. A free verse poem is one of those kinds of poems where you can pretty much do whatever you want. And then limericks are five line poems that are usually humorous. Have any of you heard a limerick before? I see a raised hand. Well, the rhyme scheme for a limerick is A, A, B, B, A. So next time, maybe you'll know when you hear a limerick. Oops. Um, so here is an example of one of my limericks. I thought that you would like the pie, for at least I had the will to try. But yes, the burnt crust is too hard, and the filling is just lard. At least I didn't make you die. So, kind of <laughs> odd poem, but if you take a look at it, this is the whole A, A, B, B, A thing. So, A, A, then B, B, and then A. So, A right here, pi, uh, try. And then for B, it is hard and lard. And then the last word, die, rhymes with try and pie. Yeah, so it's the A, A, B, B, A. And this can be pretty funny. Now, uh, have any of you ever eaten a pie with a burnt crust where the filling is just lard? I see some raised hands. Really? It's pretty brave of you. So, uh, I see a lot of hands that aren't raised, though. And so, for those of you like me who have not eaten a pie made out of lard and burnt crust, then you can always exaggerate or just make things up. Yeah. So, that's one of the cool things about writing poems. Well, now that we've talked quite a bit about different types of poems and how to write poems, I think it's time for us to write a poem together. So, let's go back to the list of animals and vote on one to write our own animal poem about. Let me find that. Okay, here we go. So we have the German Shepherd, we have the Hamster, we have the Guinea Pig, or we have the uh, Mutt. So raise your hand if you would like to write about the German Shepherd. See some raised hands? Raise your hand if you would like to write about the Hamster. Okay, raise your hand if you would like to write about my Guinea Pig. Uh, raise your hand if you would like to write about the uh, mutt with the pit bull mix. Um, it's a little hard for me to tell from this angle which one won. Um, the hamster or the mutt? Put your hands down and then raise your hand if you want to talk. If you want to write about the hamster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay, hands down, mutt.
chase me all the oh wait, let me see. Spike, <laughs> why do you chase me all the time? Um what rhymes with time? Actually, this is one of the um, things about funny poems. 
a good way to test if they're funny or not is read it out and see if anyone smiles or laughs a little. That way you know if it's um, kind of good. Let's see. I'm trying to find it. Um,
show you is if you met kind of more specifically right now, I'm, I am in my house. So uh, this is the basement of my house more specifically. So over there you'll see some posters. That's the kitchen. That's the kitchen over there. Has a refrigerator as you can see. If you if I zoom in closely enough. Whoa, that is so cool. You can even see like there's something on the fridge. Okay. So that is pretty cool. And one time, sometimes during a video conference, I'll actually walk over to the refrigerator and pull something out and say, what kind of idea could you get from this? I didn't do that today, but I probably should. And then over on this side, you can kind of see out, uh, that's the backyard uh, over there, and then there's a little purple ball right there. Um, yeah, just playing around with the zoo, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, so that's where I am right now, in the basement of my house. I was just reading one of his poems 
Falls recently. Um, for uh, in, in my English class, there's a unit social commentary, and so we are reading one of his poems.